1 Chronicles 29, 1-30 Devotional Focus Verse Thus David, the son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel, and the time that he reigned over Israel was forty years. Seven years reigned he in Hebron, and thirty and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. And he died in a good old age, full of days, riches, and honor. And Solomon, his son, reigned in his stead. 1 Chronicles 29, 26-28 The passing of a loved one stirs many memories, and it can be difficult to choose just the right thoughts to share when planning a funeral or memorial service. How can the essence of a life lived well be captured effectively? Some families choose to put together a video featuring pictures of their loved one, a visual portrayal of the significant, happy, or even silly moments of the individual's life. At other times, family members or close friends speak at the service, recounting special moments and sharing fond recollections of the individual. Sometimes families prepare a printed program that includes a biographical summary of the individual's life and testimony. Whatever method is chosen, the desire is to preserve and memorialize the character of the one who is no longer with them. As we consider end-of-life issues on a personal level, how can we ensure that we leave our loved ones with memories that will benefit them? When people consider what they'll leave to family members, they often think of material assets such as an insurance policy, the family home, or physical possessions. I remember my mom putting small stickers on furniture and other personal mementos with the name of the person she thought would enjoy the item. While the mementos and heirlooms left behind may be treasured, a spiritual legacy is far more important than any earthly possessions we might leave to our families. C.T. Studd's wise words in a poem he wrote many years ago has two familiar lines that can guide us in ensuring that we leave a spiritual legacy. He wrote, Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Yielding our hearts to God and following Him faithfully will not only bring the greatest blessing in our own lives here on earth, but the example set will also be the greatest treasure we can leave for our loved ones when we go to our eternal reward. In today's text, the life of King David was coming to an end. David had failed at times in his spiritual walk, but his deepest desire had always been to please God. He had done all he could to restore the kingdom of Israel and, in his older years, to prepare for the building of the temple. His closing instructions to his son Solomon were not about wealth, fame, or accomplishments. Rather, they were an admonition to serve God with a perfect heart and a willing mind and to keep his commandments and statutes. He assured Solomon that if he would do this, he would prosper in all that he did. See 1 Chronicles 28, 9 and 1 Kings 2, 1 through 4. David's admonitions to Solomon are applicable for us as well. There will be a glorious reward for those who dedicate their lives to the Almighty God, and the memories and spiritual legacy they leave behind will inspire and encourage those who follow them. Background Information The last chapter of 1 Chronicles summarizes several main events at the close of David's life. Verses 1 through 5 record David's final address to the people of Israel, and verses 6 through 9, the people's willingness, material support, and commitment to build the temple. David's final prayer for his nation and Solomon is recorded in verses 10 through 19, and the people's prayer in verses 20 and 21. Verses 22 to 25 provide details regarding the anointing and crowning of Solomon as the new king of Israel and David's death and burial are described in verses 26 through 30. Having obeyed God's instructions not to build the temple himself, see 1 Chronicles 28 verses 3 through 6, David stated in verse 2 that he had prepared with all my might for the house of my God. This was certainly true. He provided the land, money, materials, supervisory staff, workers, and plans clear evidence that he gave this work of preparation his best efforts. David amassed a huge quantity of materials to prepare for the building of the temple by his son Solomon. 
Converting the list given in verses 2 through 5 into today's measurements, the collected materials included 188 tons of gold, over 375 tons of silver, 675 tons of bronze, and 3,750 tons of iron, plus a staggering amount of jewels and marble that could only be described as in abundance. These were partially the spoils obtained from war, but in addition, David willingly offered gold and silver from his own personal resources, because I have set my affection to the house of my God. See verse 3. King David then asked the leaders and people who was willing to consecrate their service unto the Lord in verse 5. The Hebrew word translated service in this verse literally means to fill the hand and implies giving what is needed liberally and voluntarily towards building a house for worship. In response, the people not only committed to assist in the labor involved, but they also contributed generously of their personal treasures to finance the project. Verses 6 through 9. In verses 10 through 19, David rejoiced in prayer to God. His concern and love for his nation, coupled with his love for the Lord and his desire for Israel to follow in his ways, are all evident in the words he used. He included a prayer for Solomon to have a perfect heart, to serve the Lord faithfully, and for the completion of the house of God. Following the prayer, the people made sacrifices. And during the celebration of gladness before the Lord, a public announcement and anointing of Solomon as king of Israel was done, verses 22 through 25. This was the second anointing of Solomon. The first is noted in 1 Chronicles 23, 1. This follows a pattern of repeated coronations that began with Saul in 1 Samuel 10, 1 and 11, 15, and continue with David in 1 Samuel 16, 13, and 2 Samuel 2, 4, and 5, 3. In each case, the second coronation was a public confirmation of the first anointing. According to verse 27, David reigned over Israel for 40 years, seven years in Hebron, and 33 years in Jerusalem. He passed on to his reward in 970 B.C., dying at a good old age, verse 28. Bible scholars believe he was 70 years old at the time of his death. Conclusion Like King David, we want to leave those who follow us an example of serving the Lord with perfect hearts, submission to God's will, and a desire to do all we can to promote the spread of His kingdom. Then one day when we enter heaven, we'll hear our Lord's words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. 1 Chronicles Chapter 29 Furthermore David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon my son, whom alone God hath chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great, for the palace is not for man, but for the Lord God. Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God the gold for things to be made of gold, and the silver for things of silver, and the brass for things of brass, the iron for things of iron, and wood for things of wood, onyx stones, and stones to be set, glistering stones, and of divers colors, and all manner of precious stones, and marble stones in abundance. Moreover, because I have set my affection to the house of my God, I have of mine own proper good, of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God, over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house. Even three thousand talents of gold, of the gold of Ophir, and seven thousand talents of refined silver, to overlay the walls of the houses withal. The gold for things of gold, and the silver for things of silver, and for all manner of work to be made by the hands of artificers. And who then is willing to consecrate his service this day unto the Lord? Then the chief of the fathers and princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and of hundreds, with the rulers of the king's work, offered willingly and gave for the service of the house of God of gold five thousand talents and ten thousand drams, and of silver ten thousand talents, and of brass eighteen thousand talents, and one hundred thousand talents of iron. And they with whom precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord, by the hand of Jehiel the Gershonite. Then the people rejoiced, for that they offered willingly, because with perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord, and David the king also rejoiced with great joy. 
Wherefore David blessed the Lord before all the congregation, and David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel our Father, for ever and ever. Thine, O Lord is the greatness, and the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty, for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine, thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thine hand is power and might, and in thine hand it is to make great, and to give strength unto all. Now therefore, our God, we thank thee, and praise thy glorious name. But who am I, and what is my people, that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. For we are strangers before thee, and sojourners, as were all our fathers, our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. O Lord our God, all this store that we have prepared to build thee in house for thine holy name cometh of thine hand, and is all thine own. I know also, my God, that thou treest the heart, and hast pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of mine heart I have willingly offered all these things, and now have I seen with joy thy people, which are present here, to offer willingly unto thee. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this for ever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people, and prepare their heart unto thee. And give unto Solomon my son a perfect heart, to keep thy commandments, thy testimonies, and thy statutes, and to do all these things, and to build the palace, for the which I have made provision. And David said to all the congregation, Now bless the Lord your God. And all the congregation blessed the Lord God of their fathers, and bowed down their heads, and worshipped the Lord, and the King. And they sacrificed sacrifices unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings unto the Lord, on the morrow after that day, even a thousand bullocks, a thousand rams, and a thousand lambs, with their drink offerings, and sacrifices in abundance for all Israel and did eat and drink before the Lord on that day with great gladness. And they made Solomon the son of David king the second time, and anointed him unto the Lord to be the chief governor, and Zadok to be priest. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king instead of David his father, and prospered, and all Israel obeyed him. And all the princes, and the mighty men, and all the sons likewise of King David, submitted themselves unto Solomon the king. And the Lord magnified Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel, and bestowed upon him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. Thus David the son of Jesse reigned over all Israel. And the time that he reigned over Israel was forty years, seven years reigned he in Hebron, and thirty and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. And he died in a good old age, full of days, riches, and honor, and Solomon his son reigned in his stead. Now the acts of David the king, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Samuel the seer, and in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the book of Gad the seer. With all his reign and his might, and the times that went over him, and over Israel, and over all the kingdoms of the countries.